Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A low cost, high quality collective that can be used in either left or right hand. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we will be reviewing the HC200 slash 500 collective by jpi3d.com. Before we get started, I just have one disclaimer. I purchased this product for review, and I will also post links down below in the description if you would like to pick one up. There are no affiliate links down below. Oh, and if you missed the intro video for this entire product series, I will also post links down below for that. That'll explain why I'm doing this series in the first place. In today's video, we will first take a closer look at the hardware and the electronics that make up the collective. Now, what you see here is the HC200 model. There is also the HC500 as an upgrade kit to this model. That'll be important here in just a moment. Once we're done going through the hardware, we'll then jump over to the developer's website, go over the various models they have available, but more importantly, the price. Once we're finished there, we will then jump back in the studio, and then I will go over how to do the upgrade process if you had purchased the HC200 and want to upgrade to the HC500 model. Then we will jump over to the cockpit, install everything on my chair, we'll then fire up Windows, calibrate everything there, and then jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator and demo the product. Once we're done, I will then go over my final conclusions about the product. I would like to give a big thanks to Will over at JPI3D. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. First, I want to go over what's included in the box when you receive it. You will have your collective, of course. Then you will also get a 2040 extrusion that will be used to mount the collective to your cockpit. And lastly, a six foot USB cable to connect everything up to your PC. If you order the HC200 model, this is the unit you will receive. Now, this one is also set up for the right hand, so in my cockpit, I can use this on the right side of my chair. Now, if you order this for the left hand, please note that all of your buttons, including the friction wheel, will be mirrored to the other side. Now, one of the things that I'm always leery about when 3D printing parts that are going to have forces applied to them well, I'm always wondering, is something going to break? So that's why I want to go over everything on this particular unit, because I think that the developer of this has printed the parts that can be printed, and the parts that need to be more secure are made of metal, or as you see here as the main shaft, this is carbon fiber. If we take a look at the side of the unit for the friction knob, you will also see there is a metal bolt that goes through here that's going to tighten up the unit for the friction. And if you look right above that in this bearing cap, we have a sealed bearing and a carbon shaft that runs through that. And that is what the main axis is pivoting on. So we'll have a bearing on this side and there's a bearing on this side. We'll get a closer look at that once I take this cover off. That will ensure that you're going to get a very smooth movement when you're moving the collective up and down because of those bearings. Now, the other thing that's going to play a factor in smooth movement is the way the friction is set up on this device. So how this works is there is a friction bolt that goes through and then runs through the red pieces here. And then there are some black pieces inside of there. Now, if you can see right between the red and black, there's a little shiny thing there, and those are washers. Those washers are what makes contact with the red piece that your handle is connected to. The type of plastic that this red is made of is PETG plastic, so it's a lot stronger than your typical PLA. Now, the other thing that you may notice here is some scratch marks on the red piece itself. So I have the original piece that was in it. I'll explain that here in a moment. But on this, you will see those same scratch marks that are on here. Now, the reason for that is when you 3D print 
things are not exactly flat and smooth. And to get a very smooth action, this needs to be filed down. So that's what the developer did. He took a small file and filed out all of the rough edges so that when you are moving this up and down, it feels very, very smooth. So now for those of you asking, well, why do you have another piece there? And for those of you who have really noticed, why does it look different than the one that's on there? Well, since I've had this unit, there's actually been a major design change with where the handle mounts to the body of the collective. As you can see on the original design, this had a little slit in the bottom and a 45 slit up the side, and that created a degradation in the structural integrity of the piece itself. So what the developer did, he went back and redesigned this to make a clamshell type mount. This piece is actually supported from front to back. Unlike this one, it doesn't actually attach until about midway down the piece. So needless to say, I got pretty intimate with this product and I took it down to pieces to get everything installed. So I was able to dissect everything that's in here so I'd be able to tell you uh, what I found. So now what I wanna do is take off the side piece so we can get a closer look at all of the electronics that are being used. All right, so let's get a closer look at the internals. So what we have here that is actually reading the position of the collective is a hall switch. A hall effect switch is similar to a potentiometer, but the difference is there is no contact with any of the parts. So the hall effects is basically a standalone sensor, and then there's magnets that run around in this collar here, and then the Hall effect sensor will read the magnets as it's moving, and that will determine the position of the collective handle. The main board that's being used is an Arduino Nano underneath of this little PCB. The developer has created a PCB board that connects directly on top of the Nano. This will make it very easy for when you want to swap out your handle for the upgrade kit. It's a simple plug and play. And let me see if I can get a closer look at this for you. So as you can see, here is the bearing on the inside that the main shaft runs on. This would be the collar that has your magnets. And then your Hall effect switch is right in this piece there. All right, so now what I wanna do is take apart the collar that is on the collective handle so I can show you some of the parts that are being used here. All right, so if we take a look at the bottom of the throttle handle, you can see we have a bearing here to give you a very, very smooth motion. If I flip us around, down inside of here, there is also a bearing for the upper portion of the handle. Because this handle is riding on these big bearings on top and bottom, the motion is very, very smooth on this. This will also give us a chance to take a look at some of the 3D printing that is on this. The button on the side here is for our throttle release. Now I've got it off. When you receive your unit, yours may look a little bit different in terms of this washer. Now I added this washer to help reduce any wear on this lower collar. The reason for that is, well, you'll notice here, this collar is going to be what's holding this handle up, and you can also add a little extra friction to this handle. If you find that it turns too easy, then you can press up on this collar and tighten the back, and that'll give you some friction on the collar. However, when you do that, it will wear the collar just slightly because of that added friction. So now I wanna get a close up of the buttons that are on top of the unit. So we have a toggle switch and a push button over on the left hand side. Now let's throw this on the scale and get a weight if I can. All right, so there you go. I hope you can see that. We are 705 grams total for the HC200 model. The HC500 will add some more buttons on the head, so it'll probably be a little bit heavier than this.
let's get some dimensions on the shaft. So we're right about 20 millimeters on the main collective shaft. And for those of you who want to know what type of bearings are in here, these are 608 sealed bearings. And on the front of the collective, a cool little placard to let me know exactly what model I purchased. On the left hand side here, or right hand side, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, this is where we're going to connect a USB-C cable to go to our PC. And underneath we have a little cable stay for the USB cable. On the back side of the unit, he's also included a little Allen key so that if you need to swap out your handles, you can do that with the Allen key. To give you an idea on the size of the head, we are just about 75 millimeters wide, and the throttle handle itself is 28 millimeters in width on the handle. All right, so now let's take a look at the HC500 handle. And then we're going to do the swap over from the 200 to the 500 for those that purchase the upgrade kit on the website. So let's go to that now. This is going to be the right-handed version of the HC500 collective handle. This is what you'll receive for the upgrade kit to swap out the 200 handle. Now, as you can see on the 500, we have a couple more buttons here. So we have a up, down, left and right hat switch on the left, and we have an up and down momentary switch next to that. We also have the same toggle, and we have a push button over on the right hand side. Now keep in mind that if you purchase this for the left hand, everything on this will be mirrored. Let's see if I can get this in camera here. And of course the 3D printing, in my opinion, looks very, very nice on this unit as well. The first thing that we need to do to swap the handle over, well, one is to take your cover plate off that we've already done, and then we're going to remove the little connection down here. Now, you want to be very careful when you are removing this connector. Once that's done, we can take this entire piece out, and now we have to remove the grommet from this little back wall. Now, the design on yours may change from the one that is shown here. We're just going to rock this back and forth. There we go. Whoops. And your grommet should pop off. All right, so now that's done. We're going to take the included wrench. I'm going to loosen up. Slightly. You don't need to remove them completely. When you're pulling this through, you can see here that the grommet can get stuck on the handle itself. Now the problem with that is if I just go and yank this out, the grommet's gonna wind up pulling out and yanking on your wires. So what I do is just push, push with this hand and I'm pushing that way to get it through. Next, for the new one. Now while I'm doing this, I also want to talk about the adjustability factor. So as you're putting your shaft in, if you don't want the handle to be so long, or if you want a longer handle, then you can do that as well. The other thing that I like is some people like the collective to be tilted towards them, which you can do that or you can tilt it away from you. For now, I'm just gonna put everything straight up and down. We're gonna tighten these hand tight first to where they're just snug. Then once they're snug, I will then come back in and go a quarter turn on both, and that's it, that's all you need. Now what I need to do is to install the grommet along with the back wall. Again, yours may be a little bit different when you get it. Now what I wanna do is see just how much cable I need inside the unit to get it plugged in properly. So as you can see, I really don't need a lot. So I'm probably gonna put the grommet right there. It's so hard to do this with these cotton gloves. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press this into the back wall. Right here. 
You want to work this in. If you get this particular model, you just need to work it back and forth because it is a very, very snug fit. And that's good because the previous design was not so snug and there was actually a little bit of noise that came from it because of that. The other thing that you want to make sure of is that there's no twisting happening. So as you see, I've got to put this in like this, but the cable wants to kind of twist like that. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit. May actually be easier if you plug this in first. So I'm just going to plug it in here. And you want to make sure you push it all the way down till you hear the snap. And then you can install the back wall piece. And we are all set to go. So from here, we will install the top cover. And when you're putting these screws in, you do not want to over tighten these top cover screws. Snug is just fine. There's no force being applied to this cover. And that is how you do the swap over from the HC200 to the HC500 collective stick. All right, so now let's jump over to the developer's website. We'll go over the various models as well as the pricing. All right, we're over at the JPI3D.com website. Links will also be down below in the description. So when you get here, we're going to head over to the controls tab at the very top, and this will list all the variations of models that they have to offer. All of the pricing for each of these models are going to be in the individual links. Now, one thing you're going to notice here is the HC200 model does not have a picture here, and that's because it's such a new design. So let's click on the HC200 and see what we have here. Okay, as you can see, the price for the HC200 is 120 US dollars. To purchase any of the collectives, on the right-hand side, under the price, you will have a purchase link, and this will take you to the Etsy store so that you can purchase the unit. Underneath of the purchase link, for each of these collectives is a product documentation tab. If we click on the product documentation tab, this will take you to the documents for all of the various models. And if we click on HC series general setup instructions, this will give you some basic instructions on how to set the collective up, as well as calibrating it within Windows as a Windows controller. Now let's take a look at the HC 500 model. We'll click on the link. For those that want to jump right into the HC500, the price for this collective is 180 US dollars. And as you can see, we have much more information about this particular collective. Now just keep in mind that the difference between the 200 and 500 is really the amount of buttons that we have on the collective. Below will give us some features about the collective, the buttons, the hall sensor, and the friction adjustment. And if we scroll all the way down, this will give you some pictures of the left-handed model. Remember, I was showing the right-handed model today. He also has an option for the buttons that are on it as well. So you could either have a red push button instead of your two-way toggle as shown here on the right. The collectives will also be available in either left or right-handed models. Any of the right-handed models will be special order and you will not find them on the Etsy store. To purchase a right-handed model or a custom color for your collective, make sure to click on the contact us to place a special order for your collective. Back over on the control page, let's scroll down a little bit and we have two other models here available, the HC100 and the Apache Collective. The HC100 is being phased out at the moment and supplies will be limited on the amount of hardware that he has left to make those units. All of the HC100 units are special order only. They will not be available in the Etsy store. You must contact them to place your order. The price for the HC100 is $300. And lastly, we're gonna head down to the Apache and let's take a look at that stick. The Apache Collective comes in at $400. Now, some of you might say, wow, that seems like a lot of money. But hold on a second. If we were to purchase the same type of collective in a metal form, 
most likely going to be spending two to three hundred for the collective, and then you're going to spend another two or three hundred for the handle. Remember, the Apache Collective is only by special order, so you must contact them to place your order. Oh, there's one more link I forgot about. If we scroll down below the Apache, we have the HC200 to 500 upgrade kit. For those of you who purchased the HC200 model and you want to upgrade to the HC500 handle, well, you don't have to buy the entire collective again. For you, you could buy the upgrade kit to the 500. And if we click on the link, the upgrade kit is $90 for the additional HC500 handle so that you can attach to your collective base. And again, over in the product documentation, there should be some installation instructions coming soon. All right, so I think now's the time we're gonna install the collective on my cockpit chair, and then we will connect it to the PC and do the Windows calibration. So let's get started. All right, so underneath of my chair, I decided to 3D print me a bracket that I could screw into the bottom of my chair and the 2040 extrusion will fit right inside of that hole. The reason why I did that was to give me the ability to pull the entire collective off of my chair and the extrusion. I don't want that sticking out the side because I use that chair as my office chair. So I'll show you what it looks like once I have everything installed. What I wanna make sure of is that I do not put the threaded portion of this inside of that because I need to be able to screw the collective onto this. So the other side is non-threaded. I'm gonna put that in the bracket. Now we'll just take the collective and on one side of this, there's an opening and the other side is closed off. So you can't put it on the wrong way. All right, there we go. Now the collective's on. I'll go ahead and put the screw in. Only hand tight just to keep it in place. We'll take the USB, plug that right in the front, and then use the little cable stay underneath. All right, so that is the collective installed. Now we're gonna jump over to the PC, do the Windows calibration, and then the fun part, we're gonna hop in the sim. I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to get this calibrated in Windows is we're gonna head down to the search and I'm just gonna go up to the control panel. If yours isn't there, just type in control panel and it'll populate. Next, we're gonna go over to hardware and sound and the very top, we're gonna to click on device and printers. Now this is gonna bring up all of your USB devices that you have connected and this is the Arduino Micro that is in the collective. So we'll right click and then we'll select game controller settings. From here, we wanna choose or highlight the Arduino micro and then we're gonna click on properties. Once the menu populates, this is what you should have on your screen. To calibrate everything, we need to go over to the settings tab at the top and then we're gonna choose calibrate. That will populate a calibration wizard to where we can then hit next. I'll hit next again. The first axis that we're gonna calibrate is the throttle. So we're gonna do that several times just so we can get the range values dialed in. And then we're gonna hit next. Now we're gonna calibrate the collective portion. So we will just ride up through the range and down and we'll do this several times. We'll hit next, finish, and that's it. We have now calibrated the collective. Now if I press on the buttons, you will see the buttons on the screen light up. The hat switch is working. Once we're done there, we can hit OK. OK. And that, my friends, was the calibration process of your new collective. So now let's jump in the simulator and see if everything works. All right, we're gonna be using the Mini 500 for today's demo. So let's hop into the controls so that we can set up all of the key binds. Once we're here, we need to find Arduino Micro at the very top, and now we can start searching by name. 
So I'm gonna type in collective. Then we're gonna come over and click on collective axis. And then we're gonna hit start scanning. Now we can move up on the collective. And as you see there, it registered the joystick axis for us. We can then hit validate. Now one thing that might alarm you here is that as you're moving your collective, you don't see the axis moving on your screen. That's okay, don't worry about it. Everything should work just fine in the sim. Of course, we're gonna test that here in a moment. Now we need to set up the throttle. There we go, helicopter throttle axis. We'll click that, start scanning, and then we'll twist our throttle. There we go, hit validate, and now we can hit apply. What I also wanna do is try to set up the starter button. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna be mapped correctly, but we'll just see what happens. So I'll hit start. We're gonna go down to toggle starter one. Start scanning. And I'm gonna use the toggle button on the side or the push button. Hit validate. Now let's take a look at our collective. So as you can see, it's going the opposite direction, but it looks like the throttle is working properly. All right, so let's try to set up the governor switch on the collective. Uh, let's try the helicopter engine one governor switch on first. So we'll click there, make sure that the switch you're gonna use for the governor is off, hit start scanning, and then we'll turn it on and back off. The action is gonna be on press, and now we're gonna turn the governor switch off. So we'll click there, make sure that your switch is in the off position. Then we wanna make sure the action type is on release. We'll hit start scanning, press the toggle up, back down again, and validate. Just keep in mind that the third party aircraft may be using their own LVARs, so you may need a program like SPAD or Moby Flight so that you can program these specific LVARs for the aircraft, but let's see what happens. Ah, oh, there we go. You do have to go back in and reverse the collective axis. We'll go ahead and reverse, hit apply. There we go. All right, so let's see if we can get this started up with using the starter button on the collective. So let's get the stick out of the way real quick. We need to open the fuel valve. And then I'm just gonna press on the starter button that I mapped. So now what I'm gonna do is roll on that throttle a little bit. And you see the RPMs are increasing. And for those of you who haven't tried this helicopter, this is an awesome little helicopter to fly in. All right, we're at full throttle and now I can activate the governor. There you go, the governor is kicked in and we are all set to take flight. All right, so for this portion, this is no tutorial on how to fly a helicopter. I don't even have a joystick set up right now, so all I wanna demonstrate is that it works in the sim, and you should be able to see the helicopter lift off the ground, so uh, let's just see what happens. And there you go, we're flying. <laughs> Without a stick. Okay, so that was the demo of Microsoft Flight Simulator. As you can see, everything works as it should. So now what I wanna do, before I go over my final thoughts, 
is I want to measure the force that is on the stick. Now, I'm not going to crank this in full force because I don't want to break anything, but I just want to give you an idea of how much friction can be applied on this collective. So let me show you. All right, as you can see, we're reading zero. And there you go. All right, so as you can see, I'm right around 57 ounces of force to pull that up. If I switch to kilograms, I am at 1.615 kilograms. And in pounds, it is 3.56 pounds of force. Now, just please keep in mind that I did not crank this in as hard as I could. And quite frankly, the amount of friction that's on here now, I think is way too much. So I would probably dial that down to maybe somewhere around 30 ounces of force. So, but that's just to give you an idea of just how much friction that you could apply to suit your liking. What I wanna do here is measure the total deflection on the collective. So I'll make sure that we are zeroed out. There we go. And let's go to full deflection and see what we get. And there we go. Okay, for my final thoughts about the product, is it worth it for the price? In my opinion, is well worth $120 for the HC200 and $180 for the HC500 as a complete assembly. The motion of the collective itself, I feel is very, very smooth. Unfortunately, I can't relay that over a video as to how smooth this is. Throttle on the unit is also very, very smooth, and that's due to the bearings that are used in the throttle assembly as well. I like that they are using metal parts where there need to be metal parts. The only couple critiques that I would have with the unit would be Maybe there are some better mounting solutions. Now, if you have a cockpit that has extrusions, then this would probably be very easy for you to mount. The other thing I feel could be very helpful is if we got both of the Allen keys to assist in our swapping out of the HC200 for the HC500 stick. Other than that, I think this is a very solid product for the price. And for those of you who are on the fence of wanting to get into helicopters, well, this is a very cost-effective way to do that. And if you like it, you can always upgrade to the HC500 model. So I think we're going to wrap it up for today. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.